I have been away for some time, and if that pisses you off, I'm really sorry. It pissed me off too. I actually wanted to film, and I wanted to get back on YouTube, and I even had some videos to to edit and upload, but it didn't work out because so much happened. Like actually, so much happened, and. I honestly kind of in in the midst of all of that I just lost a little bit of my will to film and edit like editing is the, the the worst part of it all it's not even just like sitting down and talking to a camera that's fun actually um, and the reactions to to videos are always fun and like thank you so much for what like 250 subscribers that's so much to me and also 20,000 views on that one video it's it's getting crazy actually and then I felt really guilty that I'm not here and not uploading like I've been given a chance and I'm not using it really and taking it properly so nevertheless I have a small question for you right off the bat so actually the reason why I was gone is because I had a lot of university things to do and I went to New York I can say that I've been to New York honestly it, it didn't feel real I I don't know. It just felt like I wasn't there, that somebody else was in my body. Nevertheless, it happened and I have some vlog footage from New York, from actually preparing to go to New York and then actually being there. I have it filmed. I have some parts of it edited, but I was just thinking whether you would like to see that or not. I know that this is a channel with mostly tech content, like technology, gadgets, productivity, but I think it's cool to see, I mean, at least for me, it's it's really cool to be a kid, I mean kid, I'm 23 years old, but to see myself really, to see where I've, I, I, what I've reached, you know, considering where I'm coming from and my background and everything and, and to, you know, get to New York and to be there and to get to attend a conference that's a pretty big thing, I have to say. So, I don't know, maybe for some of you it's not interesting, but for me, I don't know. If you want it, let me know in the comments down below. You can leave a comment saying that you would like to see those vlogs and I'm gonna upload them. Okay, now on to the more techy side. I want to give you first of all some of the updates regarding my own tech. So yes, again, thank you for 20,000 views and that MacBook Pro review. I'm still using it. It's a good device. It's a really, really good device and I love it. I've kind of attached or actually I have some sentimental value for it at this point. It's served me and done me well. I actually used it for all of my classes and even for the conference in New York, I brought it along. And one of the biggest pros of this laptop is its design. Like it's not plastic, like that's the main thing. So I didn't worry about it being squished or broken or anything like that in the overhead compartments. And it's so like, it's sturdy. The, the body is so sturdy. You don't, you don't hear any cracking. You don't hear anything, which is amazing when you use it in everyday situations. It's getting really broad outside. So I'm going to look like Casper the friendly ghost, except I'm not friendly. <laughs> I was taking notes, I was making speeches on this laptop, um, I was writing them, I was doing research, so you can do multitasking. One of the things, however, is I was a little bit anxious about the battery, you know, and I mentioned that in my first video on it. It needed a battery replacement, even though it doesn't say it needs servicing in the actual settings, but it has like, I think, over 800 cycles. So that pretty much says it all. But it, it, it still really lasts maybe for five hours of use. And it's like just web browsing and, 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 you know, using Google Docs. If you go a little bit heavy on it, then it's maybe around three, three and a half hours. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I just wanted to give you a small update. Also, I have received um, software updates for the MacBook. They're still rolling software updates in terms of security patches and just small bug fixes and all. But I have actually heard or actually they said or announced at the uh, WWDC conference or the WWDC keynote event, whatever they call it, that they will not support updates for macOS, the new Ventura update for devices older than or released prior to 2017. So this is a 2015 MacBook Pro and unfortunately won't receive 
a software update. That's a little bit sad, actually, because I like it. And this is the device that I have that I love to use. But I will have to upgrade to a new laptop. But I'm not going to reveal just yet which one I want to upgrade to. That will be a surprise for, for you. Yes, I also found an... I, I honestly... I was so surprised that I didn't know about this feature because I like to multitask. I like to have like a couple of windows open at any given time, uh, especially if I'm doing research and, you know, university things. So I like to connect my MacBook to my uh, actual monitor, to my desktop monitor that you can see over there in the corner. It's a big monitor. So I use the HDMI connection to mirror my MacBook screen onto that one. And I didn't know that you could use the MacBook Pro as a secondary screen. I was so gooped. You can essentially use the actual monitor as the main screen because of bigger real estate, of course. But then you can also use the MacBook as a secondary screen. And the transition between the actual monitor and the MacBook, it's seamless. Just move the pointer, the window, whatever you're doing to the left corner of the screen and it immediately transitions over to the MacBook. How genius. But I love when I find new things out that I didn't know about. And they just kind of surprise me, you know? It's like when you find like $5 bill in your back pocket and you're just like, wow, I didn't know it was there. Except, you know, $5 bill isn't much nowadays, so. Regarding other updates, so you know that video on the tablet that I filmed? I sold the tablet because I told you in the last video on it. It wasn't really for me. I didn't see much of views from it. I couldn't justify owning a $400-ish dollar tablet, which I used for watching TV shows and YouTube. So I sold it and I got a pretty good value on it. I think, you know, it was losing value by each day and Samsung has released like two or three other new tablets after that one. It was the Samsung Galaxy S6 Lite. And I'm not sad actually that I sold it. I'm, I don't even notice it because I haven't used that tablet in so long and I I wasn't using it whilst I owned it, so. And lastly, I just have some small, like, brief updates before we move on to the Apple event. I bought a power bank, 10,000 million power battery, or a power bank. I'm not the happiest with it, but it was the cheapest option out there. Um, it can charge my phone maybe twice, which makes sense because my phone has, I think, around 5,000 million power battery, but it's so slow to charge. It is so painstakingly slow. And then it has a micro USB connection. It doesn't even have a USB-C type connection. So you have to charge it with the small, like the smallest, shortest cable that they packed it with. And it's so annoying. Yeah, it's not the best thing, but it really saved me so many times. Even when I was in New York, I, I the, the, the schedule was very like packed. I was so busy and I would use that battery to just bail me out so many times when I needed uh, some extra juice on my phone. So yeah, my phone actually received a software update, but I'm planning to, it's a Samsung phone. So Samsung devices received the new Samsung UI, which has brought some visual changes, but I'm planning actually to film a separate video on that topic. So if you're interested, give this video a thumbs up. And lastly, the Redmi Buds that I mentioned in my tech unboxing video, Video, which no one watched. Thank you for that. They're amazing. Like they're actually pretty great still. Um, the battery is really good. The build quality, the sound quality, it's really, really good. So if you are on the look or on the hunt for, if you're a student especially, so for um, very affordable earbuds, I would recommend the Redmi earbuds. Moving on to Apple and their annou announcements. So they are bringing software updates to iPhones and MacBooks uh, or Mac computers. Most importantly, they are bringing really great features. Like th there's a visual overhaul to the lock screen, but really they made it much more customizable and much more efficient. So now you can put widgets which are updating in real time onto the lock screen so you don't have to unlock the actual phone to get into the widgets for them to refresh and update and so on, like including the weather widget, for example. They also added the fitness tracking for iPhones. So now you don't even have to have the Apple Watch to 
have that on your phone. They have added some security features in terms of Face ID, which now is needed to access to your, to your recently deleted photos and videos, the album. A small feature, but for me, it is such a smart feature. But now you can see the actual Wi-Fi password of the Wi-Fi network that you're on. Why hasn't that been a feature? even before. You're connected to the Wi-Fi network. Why can't you see the password? Now you can also add some like photos to shuffle on your home screen. So, or on your lock screen actually, which actually has been a, a feature on Android devices for quite some time. Okay. So in terms of other software features, you can edit or unsend iMessages. This has been present on other messaging apps. Now it's been introduced to iMessages as well. Now the bad side of iOS 16 is that it won't be supported by iPhones such as the iPhone 6, 7, 7S, and iPhone SE. It won't be supported on these devices. Which actually brings me to macOS Ventura. As I've said, it won't be supported by the earlier models of Macs uh, than 2017. And honestly, the features that they kind of brought to macOS Ventura are not that big. Yes, improvements in multitasking, they're going to have a side dock or a sidebar of the open windows and you can like drag items into there and like you can pick them up and put them somewhere else. And also you can use your iPhone as a, as your web camera now, which is, I'm excited to see how that's going to work out. They have also shown shots of the wide angle camera being used to film overhead, which is really great for a lot of online teaching and, um, you know, giving instructions to your students because they will now be able to see what you're actually doing on, on your table, on your desk. They have also introduced Apple Pay later for all of us that might not be able to pay via single payment for all of these very expensive devices. So now you can actually split it uh, across four installments or payments across six weeks with zero interest and zero additional costs. It's not a lifesaver, but it is a good way to go forth. You know, if, if they explore and uh, enhance this approach, it's going to be really cool. And now we get to my favorite update or announcement, and that is the new MacBook Air, the M2 MacBook Air. I have both positive ne and negative opinions on it, mostly positive, but the negatives are the design that is used from the new MacBook Pros and just kind of like slapped onto the MacBook Air but it's still a MacBook Air, of course. It's a very thin device, but I'm just like, I loved the wedged design of the MacBook Air. You know how it like slopes and it comes to this very thin, thin point. And now that's gone. It's more rectangle. It's more unified. It's like thick or thin, really. Same thinness across the whole device. I mean, I guess that's fine, but I was a big fan of the previous design of the MacBook Air. And you, you now have the notch on the display, but the display is a little bit bigger because the bezels are now thinner. No fan, of course, and it features the new M2 processor. As usual, it will bring some performance updates or more GPU cores and, and whatnot, but I don't, I'm not sure that this is a viable update that you have to make if you have Book Air, the M1 version. I'm not sure that you really need to jump onto this update, especially considering that it's $12.99, so it's not $9.99 as the M1 MacBook Air was. In terms of colors, that's what, another thing that I was kind of disappointed with. It's not colorful as we were expecting it to be. It has four colors. They are very basic as well. There's the Midnight Black, which is my favorite one, but it's going to be a fingerprint magnet. So I'm not sure we are benefiting much from the actual colors, but you know the renders or the images that we were seeing across the internet of the upcoming MacBook Airs, like so colorful, so bright. The pastel colors were so beautiful. And then we got only like four options. Kind of disappointing actually, but it is what it is. The new MacBook Air, the M2 MacBook Air has an improved webcam. It's now a 1080p webcam and it also has a really big battery. Supposedly it's going to last up till 18 hours of video playback. It has the MagSafe connector, which not only it's a staple really item of MacBooks at this point, but it helps people with disabilities to more easily connect their chargers to the actual laptop. Yes, there have been a lot of announcements, a lot of improvements, 
but I, I was expecting a little bit more, especially when it comes to the MacBook Air. Tell me what your opinions, thoughts, comments are down below. Make sure to answer to my question from the beginning of the video and leave a like. If you really enjoyed my content, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoy my channel as a whole, please leave a like. Stay safe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Or actually, you will see me. Bye.